morning guys I have to look my watch see what day it is it's Wednesday all my days are mixed up when you don't go to bed one night you get uh, you get kind of confused but uh, I'm in the T5 it's been sitting here running for a while I cranked it and I went and got me some breakfast and a coffee but I'm getting ready to go push uh, a private driveway I pushed a bunch yesterday I didn't film any of it but I got another one I gotta go do so I thought I'd uh, take y'all with me today to do this one. Hopefully it was the last one, but I doubt it. It's like just every little bit somebody's calling about the driveway. But uh, I understand there's a lot of snow out here and you can't get out. You can't get out through this snow. It just packs down, turns into a solid sheet of ice if you try to drive on it. And then you can't go on it. Anyway, I got the HLA 3000 on the front of this uh, tractor there you go 3000 series it's got snow all over from yesterday but uh, we're thinking about buying another 4000 series 10 foot blade to go on this tractor a little bit bigger blade this is a 9 foot blade I think I talked about this in another video but when we bought this blade right here it the only thing they offered in the 3000 was a 9 foot uh, they now offer a 10 foot, but the reason we bought this particular size blade was because I was running it on the, the uh, TN95 at the time, and it was plenty big for it, because it was a lot smaller frame tractor, but now that I'm running on this T5, it's a little bit small for it, so we're considering buying the 4000 series, like it's on that 6030, it just won't have all the wing stuff on it. Um, because that is a snow wing and then it'll just be a snow blade on this so kind of excited about getting that if if we decide to get it we're still me and dad have been throwing an idea back back and forth a little bit so anyway let's go push your driveway okay we are now at the driveway i gotta push and we're going to get started on it. Got to be really careful with these gravel driveways or next thing you know you've got all the gravel pushed off with it. So this blade's got skid shoes on it and I kind of curl the blade back let it ride on the skid shoes as much as possible and that seems to help a whole lot I ain't never been on this driveway before and it looks like it's going to be pretty steep going downhill pretty hard right now so hopefully I can get back out of here I don't have any change with me Matter of fact, I've never put chains on this tractor before. Run them on the 6030 a lot, but never run them on this tractor. Got a lot of sharp curves in it too. Down there is the river. 
idea how big this parking lot is. But it don't look all that big. what you get into on these private driveways fortunately I was able to, to see there was a little hump in the snow it kind of gave me a, a tip that there might be something here you probably can't see it but there's a little bitty hump but stuff like that right there will get you pushing snow next thing you know you got it torn out ripped out and then people are pissed off at you it's one reason I hate doing private driveways Fortunately, fortunately, I seen that before I ripped it out. But somebody's got a lot of shoveling to do. But anyway, I'm gonna get this lot cleaned up a little better and then see if I can get back up that steep hill right there. Another thing people get mad about is if you uh, scrape the gravel off, push it over in the yard. Um, 
it's it's almost impossible to not get a little bit of gravel here and there but for the most part you just got to leave a skiff of snow on these on these gravel driveways if you cut try to cut it all the way to the gravel the gravel mixes in with the snow and and you end up pushing a lot of gravel off the driveway and people get upset about that so that's another reason i hate doing private driveways but Basically, all you can do is leave a skiff of snow on here. You can see right there is one spot I, I scalped it a little bit. And, uh, I mean, you just, best you can do is it's hard to not do stuff like that. But, anyway, let's try to get back up this driveway and get out of here. Got them a place to turn around down here now. Should be happy with that. So. Back up the hill we go. Well, I, while I'm riding back up this hill, I thought I'd talk about what I'm doing a little bit here. Um, I'm sure somebody will ask whether I'm running this loader in float position while I'm pushing the snow, and the answer is no. I don't normally run in float position unless I feel that I've don't know where I'm at anymore. If I think I'm putting too much down pressure or I'm not putting enough pressure, I'll put it in float and then lift back up on it after I put it in float. The reason I don't like to run it in float is because it just seems to be too much weight on the blade when you put it in float. It just seems it, it just, it takes weight off the front of the tractor. It don't steer as good and it just seems like it's a lot harder on the loader because the loader tries to flex and go with the blade and it just I, I don't like running it in float uh, normally I'll sometimes I'll put it in float to get to uh, kind of find a, a balance I guess or the you know without putting down pressure down I put it in float so I, I know I'm not putting down pressure and then I'll take it out of float and I'll raise back up on it so I'll take some of the weight off the blade and um, I'll kind of just try to manually follow the ground as I go along and I normally have pretty good luck doing that because I try to I try not to, to let all the weight of the loader right on the blade I mean, the tractor just goes and steers so much better if you if you raise up on it just a little bit and that goes for the uh, snow wing that I use on the 6030 also I don't run it in float either if you put that tractor if you put it in float uh, you can't steer it at all you have to put some some of that weight of that blade on the front tires and then it'll steer and go just fine this tractor is kind of the same way um, this blade I think I said earlier is nine foot wide uh, when you angle it, this tractor is almost eight foot wide. When you angle this blade, it's just barely making a hole big enough for this tractor. That's one of the reasons why I want to go to a 10 foot blade. So going around these turns was really difficult because the tractor is wide enough and with the loader, the blade been on the loader long enough, uh, when I go around these turns, the rear tire was actually driving up on the wind row of the snow you can kind of see that over to the left there so these curve these really hairpin turns were kind of hard for me to clean but i finally got them in pretty good shape on the second pass um, but i was really surprised how well the tractor came up back out of here it's rather steep down in there and no chains you just don't know what you're going to get into sometimes sometimes you can drive right back out of something like this sometimes you can't um, but I did it did just fine and this tractor does seem to go a little bit better than the 6030 does but it's it's got newer better tires on it too so all right I hope y'all enjoyed the video and we'll see y'all on the next one
made it back out. It's a steep, steep driveway. I know y'all probably can't tell it's steep, but it's pretty steep. Uh, didn't know if it would come back out as good as it did, but it did. Come back out just fine. So, I'm going to ride back down it one more time just to make sure it's all cleaned up good. And then we'll head back. So that's going to be that's going to be it for this one. I got to go do a church parking lot. I just remembered, and I think that's going to be it. I'm gonna go find something else to do besides ride the tractor around and push snow. See y'all later.